Hello everyone, it's me, Juan Gamer 4 back in another video, and today, today, we're going to be reacting to this new uh, video that ga that MadPad released. Uh, not FNAF, but, you know, by the title alone, it looks very scary to me, so I figured, why not bring October a little early for you guys? I mean, why not? I mean, we're essentially, it's just today and tomorrow, and then boom. Saturday will be the first day of October, so why not? Anyways, leave down a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below what you want me to react to next. Let's do this. Okay. I betrayed the lore. Oh. You lied about your game. Oh! Did they eat him a lot? Now you will be punished. Okay. Oh! Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that always delivers on what it promises. Cringy humor with passable fan theories. Set the bar low, my friends, and you'll never disappoint. Speaking of setting a low bar, today we're talking about Evertale, a mobile game that saw our creepy lore videos and exposés on misleading mobile ads and said yes, please, to both of those things. Not only are the Evertale ads we're talking about today misleading, there are also hundreds of them. 372, in fact. Jeez. As far as I can tell, ripping off everything from Pokemon to Amori to Final Fantasy and Earthbound. And yep, I watched each and every single one. Don't yeah. say I never do anything for you. Big shout out to the... That's even worse than... Uh, I don't... You you sure? Is that, is that even worse than the time that you reacted to every single Pokemon episode? I mean, not... I mean, like, that is a huge feat, Matt Pat. Come on, man. Get it? Man. I should probably do that the same thing, too. Huh. I'll write that down. Creepy Evertale subreddit, as well as this playlist by, uh, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that, but Stop. good job on compiling everything, guys. It helped out a ton. Anyway, in case you weren't already aware, Evertale is a mobile monster catching game that released back in 2019. It looks like this, it plays like this, yeah. and you should never download it. Never. Not once ever, because its ads look like this. <laughs> Psychological Ugh. horror at its finest, meant purely to capture your attention. Maybe get you to download the game in the hopes that at some point it's going to go off the rails Doki Doki Literature Club style. Spoiler alert, it does not. No horror mm. element, no creepy lore, just disappointment. This is clearly false advertising to trick unsuspecting creepypasta lovers into downloading their cash grab game. And that is not okay. If you want a scary Pokemon game, you could support an indie developer and give Beasts of Burden a shot. Or if you want something okay. that scratches the scary RPG itch, check out the tragically ignored Omori, which is outright ripped off here in these ads. But please, <laughs> please do not download Evertale. Do not support this kind of blatant theft and lying all to hype up their gotcha-style Genshin Impact wannabe. I mean, Lily's Garden may have wow. made more for a glorified tile matching game, but at least when I download the game, I get to see Lily and the gameplay that's being shown. So again, do not download Evertale. These horror ads are a shameless ploy used by an aging game trying to get new users hooked. And you know what? It worked on me. I got hooked. Hooked on watching the ads, that is. Because the ads are good. They're creepy. Wow, Matt Pad, way to way to go, Adam. I mean, tell them what you really feel. But yes, guys, uh, I feel like when you do an ad, you gotta be, you know, actually telling us what the game is gonna offer us. You can imagine how many games I uh, downloaded, and it don't be like that. So please, please, don't. Just listen to MatPad, this one. They're compelling. They're mysterious. Watching them, I started to get curious. Was there an actual story inside of these things? Because if you watch enough of them, some characters tend to repeat. A few of them even get consistent names. All the while, white text warns us of the consequences of our actions and tells okay. us that it's time to move on. I mean, are these just a bunch of creepy images randomly thrown together in an attempt to get clicks? Or is there an actual attempt at a hidden narrative here put in by the game's marketers? I needed hmm. to find out. So the team and I decided to watch all three hours 
hours and 22 minutes worth of fake ads in order Dang. to piece together the story that's hiding within. That is longer than the Lord of the Rings Return of the King here, people. And let me tell you, contrary to what I thought, there is a story here, and it is way better than what you get in the game itself. In fact, way better than what you get in most games these days. For those of wow. you who haven't seen any of these advertisements, first off, congratulations, your life is better off as a result. But to catch you up, <laughs> each one is around 30 seconds long, and most include at least one of six color-coded monster trainers, also known in the ads as breeders. We have uh. blue, pink, orange, gray, the blonde, and the ginger. It's a bit odd. Why are they called breeders? I already have a, I already have a bad feeling about this. Out of all the colors, red is missing, but maybe that one was too close to Pokemon source material. This young group of breeders all know each other. One ad even refers to them as a team. Many of the ads are pretty formulaic. A breeder walks around for a bit, finds themselves a dead body, or watches a monster die, and then gets jump scared or killed. Now, obviously, since these are mobile game ads, there's going to be a lot of repeats to the format as they reuse key elements to try and A-B test which versions are going to get the most clicks. Different assets are used sometimes, characters tend to get swapped out, and occasionally the dialogue changes entirely. However, and this is where it gets interesting, the characters themselves stay consistent between the ads, retaining both their unique characteristics as well as their names. Pink is Kana, Blue is Hiroto, Grey is Kazuto, and Ginger is Lizette. In fact, we learned that Hiroto Blue is romantically involved with Kana Pink. Orange, meanwhile, Nani? is a bit of a loner due to having lost a loved one, as we see in ad number 337. And Yikes. now you start to see why things get a little bit weird. Hmm. Naming characters, giving them backstories in a 30-second ad, it's not just something Something that you do for the lols. If this was just a bunch of random ads that were creepy for creepy's sake, you wouldn't maintain consistency like this. You wouldn't have specificity like this. You would just keep things as generically colored sprites. But by giving them names and backstories that are consistent and carry over, Lord. suddenly the decisions that are happening inside this world feel purposeful. They tell me that there might be more lore hidden within and that we gotta keep looking. Over the course of the ads, we watch the team go on many different adventures, like okay. hanging out in summoning circles, camping yeah. in the woods to roast their pet monsters over the Come experience <laughs> yeah, I would honestly. Yeah, I'll honestly like stop right there. Fire and hanging from meat hooks, but it's not all fun and games in the life of a breeder, my friends. There are more mundane things too, like going to the grocery store, only to then find a girl standing over a dead body, telling you to hold the bloody knife. Blue says yes, and suddenly the girl is trying to frame him for murder. Speaking of Murder Girl, in another trailer, number eight, she says that it was her monster that did the old stabby stab, and that it's up to you to bring it to justice in the room next door. Also, Murder Girl, yeah, she might just be the missing red breeder that I talked about before. Now, while all of uh, that might seem random, throughout the ads, one theme consistently so she went up, crazy capturing then. monsters and then killing those monsters. Uh. It's the classic argument against Pokemon. Oh, they're just enslaving animals and then getting them to fight each other. Except here, the violence and the horror have been cranked up to the max. In many of the ads, we see glitchy text that reads you'll be judged by the monsters you've caught in another that by catching monsters we ourselves are becoming a monster and okay. they don't mean that in the figurative way either in multiple ads we see a monster tied up outside of a hut desperately trying to escape the professor explains to us that the woman inside became so obsessed with breeding that she became a monster herself sure enough the ad ends with long shadowy arms reaching out of the house to consume the trapped creature it's actually Ooh. pretty darn similar to what we know about the pokemon world where, based on various Pokedex entries, we know that people and Pokemon are basically made of the same stuff. They can turn into one another. And again, the Wait, Evertail what? ads seem to take this very literally. It adds like true? number 353, when the cursor scrolls over a monster, the human breeder that they're made of appears underneath. So it seems like humans are indeed transforming or evolving into the very monsters that they catch, and okay. then feeding off of each other once they've turned into monsters. And they're not just transforming into monsters either. They're giving birth to those monsters. Why? Remember, these aren't trainers. They're referred to in the ads as breeders. Oh, that no. word seems very important to the lore of this no. thing. In ad number 299, we watch the player impregnate a woman using monster DNA. The resulting baby is a human-snake hybrid that gets chained up and then reappears throughout the next dozen ads or so. Her snake-like appearance actually resembles... Nope. Nope. Uh, I, I don't want to continue. Nope. Nope. No, I don't want to continue. I'm out. <sighs> All right, all right, fine. Well, 
continue, but I don't wanna. This is what we see in a much earlier ad, number 72, where we stumble into a church full of cultists worshipping a cyclops angel snake. As you might expect, the monsters aren't taking kindly to any of this. It seems like some of them are rising up to take revenge. In a couple of the ads, we see that monsters have realized that the capture balls that work on them can also work on humans. And as a result, they've decided to turn the tables by catching humans for themselves and then forcing them to battle. That is why so many of the ads feature landscapes covered in bodies and pools of blood. The monsters are forcing humans to kill each other, just like we do with Pokemon. Now that hmm. is a lot of ideas already. Breeding monsters, becoming monsters, worshipping monster gods, monsters capturing and battling humans. And this is all without me even mentioning the mysterious virus floating around in the air that causes characters to vomit or cough up blood. Do you want my honest opinion? I, I think that the marketing team for this game just took every scary trope and threw it against a wall to see what would stick. But I also think that, intentionally or not, they did create a lore here that makes sense. You see, there's still hmm. one major thread that I haven't talked about, and it brings what? all of these disparate ideas together. Across the ads, death is overwhelmingly common for the characters. In fact, most ads end in someone dying at least once. For example, Blue and Pink are forced to battle one another to the death, they're hit by cars, helicopters crash into them, they're trapped and eaten by cultists, and of course, grabbed by mysterious shadow hands. But you see, it's what happens after they die that's interesting. Sometimes okay. these deaths result in them entering an astral plane of some kind. Other times it ends with them standing over their own dead body. In ad number 94, we watch the professor get trampled by an elephant monster, only to end up in a different location. Blood underneath him as though he died, but still able to walk around without a problem. Death doesn't seem to exist in this world, and there's a good reason I mean, for that. Well, so is Dragon Ball Z. All of them are trapped in a simulation. We see what? this most explicitly in ad number 42, where one of the game's characters approaches what seems to be the boundary of the world, only oh. to find themselves reflected in a mirror. Suddenly, the mirror breaks, and a giant monster peeks through. And this isn't just any monster And either. it grabs this it, right? the same one whose DNA was used to create our imprisoned snake girl from earlier. It seems uh. like our player characters might be humans trapped inside of a game that was designed to torture and kill them over and over. Don't believe me? Well, we see it explicitly happen. In ad number 354, we literally see orange get dragged into his television monitor doesn't get more explicit than that but the clues were there the whole time in a blink and you'll miss it moment right at the start of ad number 28 we can see a name for the blonde breeder Kibakure, which translates to earthbound spirits it's a human in another ad we see kana pink earthbound walk into a spirit okay store, only for the demon inside to proclaim i will eat you alive because a human soul is a supreme feast the breeders <laughs> in the evertale simulation are not simulations they are real people trapped inside of, of a simulation. Game. And once you look at the ads this way, suddenly everything about them starts to fit together. You know those glitches that we keep seeing? Those yes. Those are just cheap, creepy ways to transition between scenes. They're intentionally here for the lore. We're trapped in a glitching simulation. In later ads, right. the glitches actually become much more obvious, with objects physically missing from the reality of that world. All instead right. replaced by distorted pixels. The scenes are literally missing things that we've seen appear in hundreds of other ads. Their simulated reality appears to be falling apart. So where where does the story end? How do they escape? Do they escape? Looking across the ads, there seem to be two options. The first is to give up and be a... It, it stopped. ...absorbed into the game's code and become part of the simulation. In ad number 322, we see... Okay, so funny thing is, I actually got a Pokemon <laughs> advertisement in this one. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know if that was... I wish I was recording that, but, you know, we don't do ads around here, so... But that's kind of hilarious that I got an advertisement of Pokemon, while this one is clearly somewhat of a Pokemon, but creepypasta. Oh, that's funny. Living is hard. You can be happy if you die. Flash up within the glitchy screen. Later, in number 363, we meet this bizarre blob creature that's known as the Sage of a Thousand Eyes. It tells Literally. Orange the void will eventually consume the world. Do you just sit and wait for it to disappear or become a part of me and gain eternal life? Now, this sage appears to be related to yet another character that we meet in ad number 140, Sato. In this ad, the gray breeder Kazuto is hit by a car. The world turns black and he finds himself floating over his own dead body. Okay. Everything glitches, and then a green ghost-like creature begins to approach him, creeping yeah. closer and 
closer. Translating the Japanese, it roughly says, Welcome to the singularity. There's no time or space here. I'm the one who controls the universe from behind. That's yeah. right. Call me Sato. The singularity is a term for the hypothetical point in time where technological growth becomes radically faster and uncontrollable. Okay. Normally used in reference to artificial intelligence gaining sentience. And I believe that's what we're seeing here. Sato huh. and the Sage of a Thousand Eyes represents one means of escape for our characters to be absorbed by this ever-growing AI blob. But there does appear to be a second route here. In what? one very specific ad, we see Blue trapped in a red hellscape. Translating yeah. his text, his dialogue reads as follows. I can't go back. My memory is returning to me. It seems the time has come to face the consequences of our actions. The idea of memories returning does happen in a few other places. And All when right. it does, it always tends to be accompanied by the failure of a program called Denial.exe. The best right. example of this comes in ad 40, where a breeder begins to remember and suddenly Denial EXE crashes, restarts, only to see the message, Denial has defeated you again. Keep pretending you're in, in control. control. It's this okay. Denial program that's keeping them trapped in the simulation. But it's why, only though? once they remember their past misdeeds and accept them that they'll be able to break the simulation's hold and escape. But what did they do? What's the thing that they're in such denial about? Well, it all goes back to that imprisoned monster snake woman. We know that the breeders were conducting experiments on monsters. In fact, we know that they were mixing human DNA with monster DNA to get these terrifying results. Oh, I think no. these experiments went too far and had unintended consequences. In ad number 336, we see Orange descending down a long Blue. elevator <laughs> into an underground lab. There, he's attacked by a mysterious fleshy creature. It happens so quickly that you can't quite make out exactly what it is, but if we watch ad number 30, suddenly everything clicks. Here, we're back in the same lab, and our breeder gets attacked by a fleshy zombie. Something about the genetic experiments with monsters went wrong to create these horrific humanoid creatures, and that, in turn, gives way to one final set of trailers that I've yet to talk about. What? Ones that look a whole lot different from everything we've covered so far. Ones that look like this. What do you mean? Oh! <laughs> hey, yo! These ads are unlike anything we've seen before. The child crying has his mouth filled with words for help. People no longer look like people, but rather monsters. This, I believe, is the real world. Jeez. The world that was created Why by the life quote, like unquote, people, though? Readers. This is what Blue was talking about in that other ad. The actions that they have to face the consequences for. They were literally creating and breeding monsters, but then they played God a bit too much. They pushed things a bit too far, and suddenly they wound if it's up a jump scare, man. the fabric of humanity. The world, the the real world is now filled with twisted, horrific monsters. So there you really have it. The story for a game that doesn't exist. The hidden lore within the messed up world of Evertale's ads. A world where breeders played God a bit too much, started to experiment too broadly with monster DNA, and created twisted humanoid zombies out for blood. A world where their successful creations like the Snake Girl are imprisoned in a basement somewhere, hidden from the rest of society, but worshipped by many. A world where breeders are pulled into a simulation made to punish them repeatedly until they're finally able to stop their denial and accept the consequences of their actions. Jeez. I'll tell you what, when I first started researching for this episode, I didn't know what to expect. And I certainly didn't expect it to be anything coherent. But it turns out that this is the perfect kind of story for a channel like ours. If only someone had bothered to make, you know, an actual game like this rather than leaving it confined in the realm of ads. So, dear Zigaza Games, stop making deceiving ads to sell a boring cookie-cutter gotcha game. And instead, focus on making the game in lore that you've been promoting. It's good. It's messy. And clearly you threw a lot out there to see what would stick. But you get what us theorists are after. It's dark. It's scary. It feels like a puzzle that we could solve. And it has this great moral message about the hubris of mankind. At the end of the day, you would have a creative product that gets people excited. That gets them to talk. Something that spawns a franchise that you can be proud of. Ah, who am I kidding? Where would the microtransactions go? But huh. hey, that's just a theory. A game.